What's going on everyone? Today we're gonna be installing these roof racks here sent to me by Bouge RV to install and review. Uh, this is a 2018 compass that we're gonna be installing them on today. On their website, they do have these available for 2016 to 2020 Honda Pilots, 2014 to 2020 Jeep Cherokees, and 2015 to 2020 Jeep Renegades. Now they also list the Jeep Compass as 2018 to 2020, but if you have a 2017 Compass that's this body style, uh, they will also work. Those are the years and models that they gave me to select from for this review. However, I'm sure they will offer more model applications down the road and they might even offer them now. So go ahead and check out their website, which I'll link down in the video description below. These roof racks are rated to hold approximately 75 kilograms or about 165 pounds. Uh, that's max weight, including the rails themselves, which are not very heavy. I would say maybe five pounds each. Um, they seem to be pretty sturdy and solid. Looks like they're made out of an aluminum with some plastic and rubber uh, just to kind of tie everything together. And their selling points are that they're supposed to be a nice solid fit with no rattling or anything like that. It's supposed to be a low noise application. So in the case of this Jeep Compass, we have a front and a rear. I'm not sure if all are that way, but in this case, we do have a front and a rear. So the next thing we need to figure out is where we want to mount the rear one, because on the compass, there is two options. The front one is going to go where you see these two plugs there and the rear, you can pick that spot or that spot. Now this Jeep does have the sunroof. So I'm going to test that with these on just to see if that still functions. And uh, primarily, this is gonna be used to haul kayaks, actually. So uh, those are 10 feet long. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the further back position. Now to begin installation, we just need to remove the plugs for the holes that you're gonna use. And if you're strong enough, you can just kind of use your fingers and twist and they'll slowly um, thread themselves out. Otherwise, uh, you can try to use a small flat blade screwdriver to get in there and kind of pry it out a little bit, but I don't want to scratch anything up, so I'm going to do it by finger. And as you see, it's just kind of like this plastic push pin that threads out. All right, I've got the two for the front rail on the driver's side removed, as well as the two for the front rail on the passenger side, and all four for the rear rail on this 18 Compass. Now we can go ahead and get the rails into position and get the hardware ready. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just test fit this quick because there are minor adjustments that can be made here. As you see, this says it's the front rail and on the edge here, it says LF for left front. So that means that this end is gonna be on the left. So the driver's side and we're gonna carefully set it up here now. Uh, be very careful, especially if you have a painted roof, you don't wanna scratch anything. So be very careful, just kind of set it in place now if it's too wide to fit in there don't jam it in because there is these rubber gaskets right here uh, we don't want to mess those up so it looks like there we go i just had to lift up on that side a little bit and it's pretty close from the right out of the box here so i'm going to actually um, take this back off loosen these two screws and just slide it out or sorry, slide it in just a tiny bit because the rail is just a tiny bit wide. We'll use the supplied Allen that they gave us in the kit. Just loosen these two up and I can slide it in just a bit. That should be enough. And I'll snug these back down. I'm not gonna go too tight for now uh, just because I might need to adjust it again. All right, that's about perfect. Uh, there's a little bit of tension to push it down in there, which is good. I want the gasket to have a nice, good seal. We want everything tight. We don't want anything loose and rattling, uh, but it's not too tight. And now I'm gonna take this back out and just cinch these screws, both of them on each side, tighten them down just a little bit more uh, to make sure they don't go anywhere, but we don't wanna over tighten them. That should be good. We'll recheck them from time to time, as you should anyways. Now we'll take one of the supplied screws that has Loctite on it already, install one of the supplied washers, and then grab one of their little gasket plates here and install it on the Jeep. So each of these gasket plates should have an L or an R on them. We're on the driver's side or the left side of the Jeep, so I'm using the L. As you'll see, it's got this 
little piece on there that's gonna catch and help lock it in. So it's gonna go in like this because we need our holes to line up. Just like that. Make sure you have it fully seated. You don't want it to be um, you know, down like this or cocked or anything. It has to be nice and flush and then we'll take one of those screws and get it started. Just like that, as you'll see, the plate is still nice and centered there. We wanna make sure that stays that way. There will be a little bit of a fight to get the screws lined up perfectly straight because um, what the little cam does on there, that little notch or that piece that sticks up on the plate is it kind of centers everything together and it pushes down to keep the gasket, uh, the rubber gasket here nice and tight and that way it's all locked together and you don't get any rattles and clunks. So um, what you want to make sure is that this plate stays in nice and flush and that your screw is going in straight. You don't want to cross thread the uh, bolt or the nut that's inside the roof rail. So it should spin nice and freely with the provided wrench. I mean, as you can see here, I'm just using very little force and it's going no problem. Be careful, you can't do a full rotation with the Allen. Uh, luckily this hits the rubber, but don't scratch any glass or paint. You will have to take the Allen tool key out and uh, reposition each time. It will take a little bit. All right, so here you can see I have both of them started on the driver's side. I'm actually gonna start passenger ones too before I go ahead and completely tighten these ones down just in case we have to move the rail a little bit I don't want to have to loosen everything back up again as the screw goes in further and you get into the Loctite portion of the threads you may need to switch the Allen wrench from this position to this position so you can get a little bit more leverage remember though don't cross thread it this one was going fine and then it just got a little stiff so I'm sure it hit the Loctite and uh it, like I said, it's kind of pulling down on that plate. So there's a little bit of resistance there. Uh, we're almost done. I have those two over there tightened up and this one tightened as well. So we're just finishing this and then we're gonna do the same steps and move on to the rear rail. Okay, onto the rear rail here. So this side with the two screws, I loosened those and it really didn't have any movement. They've got uh, alignment dowels in there. So that side, not adjustable on the rear. It's just this side here with the single, uh, you get I don't know, I would say about an inch of movement out of that. So gonna set it on there, see, see where it needs to be, and then snug that down. And just like the front rail, here it says where you need to put it. So this will be the right rear position. It will go on like that. So for the rear rail, I just put the left side, the driver's side in there, and then I drop this side in after I slid it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and I have enough room to where I can just put the Allen wrench in there and snug it up. And once it's snug enough to where it's not gonna move, I can take it fully back off the Jeep and tighten it down a little bit more. All right, so actually a little bit of a curveball here on the rear rail. The uh, left marked spacers that are supposed to go on the driver's side are actually um, I don't know if they're mismarked or if it's just opposite steps for whatever reason on the rear, but if you take one that's an L, as you see, it doesn't quite line up with the screw hole. So I actually had to take and put an R in there. And you can kind of tell which spacer you're gonna need just by looking at it, as you see here, the hole is at the bottom right of this cutout. So we need one to match. And like I said, this one's got an R on it, but we're on the left side, so went ahead and plopped that one in there and as you can see it lines up so if you're having a hard time um, getting your screw started or whatever anything like that because the plate won't line up try one of the other ones just in case all right there we are both rails installed uh, if you're doing this on a compass i'll back up here get you just an idea what it's gonna look like the kind of textured black blends in pretty darn well with everything so now of course attaching these is the you know hardest part uh, there's definitely rails I'm sure that are quicker to attach but these are not advertised as a quick attach or detach system they're just something that you know your average person can afford I believe they're 100 bucks give or take as you can see it contours pretty good there and 
I'm shaking the whole Jeep with it. They're not moving nowhere. Pretty solid. So I am going to load up the kayak here and take it for a drive, see how it does. All right, there we have it. 10 foot kayak on the 2018 Compass. I'm sure there are far better ways to do this, but I'm not going very far or very fast. I just want to give you guys a first driving impression, see if there's any weird noises or anything. So let's see how it works with the sunroof. I believe that's all the way for this one anyway. And there it is, no clearance issues at all. This is just the floppy back seat of my kayak. That's not an issue there at all. And then these are just the straps for the seat. So there's nothing that's gonna damage the sunroof or anything. So plenty of clearance there, which I like. Now the way I currently have this positioned, I can't open the hatch, but if I was to slide it forward more, uh, I definitely could. I don't need to get back there right now. So not a big deal. All right, guys, so we are in the Jeep. I haven't had it on the interstate or anything, but I've had it up to about 60 miles an hour. We're cruising at 50 right now. As you can see, I have just the slider open, but the glass is closed. And the only noise I've heard so far is the straps from the seat of the kayak slapping the roof a little bit. And uh, obviously the kayak itself makes some wind noise, so I can hear wind noise, but there's no weird creaks or clunks or anything like that. So once these things are bolted down, they're pretty sturdy uh, pieces and still snug. So like I said, guys, I'll post these in the video description as well as the other ones that I can find that are available. I'll also list their website in the video description if you want to check out their other products. They also said that they would provide me with a promo code, which I will link down below. I don't know how long the promo code is good for, but go ahead and give it a shot anyways. And that is that, guys. Uh, if this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this. Check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.